Right then, we've uh, we've encountered a little bit of rain, haven't we, Jay? <laughs> so we thought we'd come under a little shelter. R Rich is still braving the elements, but uh, no, in all seriousness, we wanted to like touch upon why we're fishing how we are, and you know, sort of like the, the baits that we're using, haven't we, mate? And, yeah. You know, it's it's all good and well, sort of like feeling you way into a session, which is what we're doing, but it's ultimately, we're trying to work out what the fish want, aren't we? Definitely. Uh, this time of year, it's all about as well, what we want to put across is treading carefully, if anything, isn't it? Definitely. It's whether you're pleasure fishing, in a match, whatever, it's all about looking for little signs or watching people around you to make sure you make the correct decisions at the right time instead of just going for it. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, you're a massive believer in it, Jay, aren't you? Sort of like... Starting off your session, but looking around and see what people are doing. Definitely. Um, I've, I've only started doing that. I mean, I'm always looking around and see what people are doing, but I won't do it to the extent that Jay does. He's like, he'll fish for a, a few minutes, half an hour, what have you, you know, and they'll be looking around and seeing whoever's catching much, and then you're straight on it, aren't you? Yeah. Whereas I'm like, I'll start off fishing, I want to fish. But for today's purposes, as I said, I've only started off with a little, that little tiny ball, and I want to see what the response is of the fish. Mm -hmm. It's likely that, you know, obviously we're going into winter, it's still autumn, but the fish do want more feed than that but you don't want to put it in because obviously once it's in you can't take it out yeah you often find it at this time of year it builds up as well doesn't it yeah in that there's, there's very little feeding or little and uh, less than there is in summer um to begin with on, on on any line so you're better off keeping your options limited with with minimal bait it's always going to increase the competition between the fish definitely and give you a best chance of getting bites when there's maybe there's 10 fish feeding in your area you can get them 10 competing yeah absolutely if you feed a load you're that massive believer um in sort of like, if you put 20 pellets in, there's a 20 to one chance you're going to yeah, get to fish. Yeah, that, that's how I look at it. With, with bigger baits like that, that's how I have to look at it. Whereas I'm like, <laughs> get it in, come on, more fish the better. But no, it, I'm not really. There's always a method to be madness. Yeah, that has to be relevant to the, the type of fish as well, don't we? Definitely. So that, the, the 20 to one sort of thing with, with pellets, which I, I do a lot, is for big fish. Big fish, that's yeah. That's for, for proper fish that eat small amounts of bait. With, with little fish, like, like we're doing today, where we're trying to cover everything, we'll get a lot of fish in the swim. That there's a lot of mouths in your peg now who knows how many mouths i mean are. i'm just looking behind coming now i want to get about fishing they're like it's like a jacuzzi out there so that that could be obviously the fish getting too preoccupied with the amount of micros i've put in i don't think it will be i generally think it's sort of bigger fish coming in and the proper having a munch yeah it's a lot of fish as well in the present definitely um and there's the same like with, with the castle line what i'm doing is I'm, I'm double feeding and obviously that first feed gets a fish in the second feed sort of concentrates them down and it's just again finding out where they want to be in that water column I won't know yet because I haven't had a chance to fish it, but when I get on it, I can't wait and hopefully we'll, we'll snare some bigger fish out on that. But th that's what it's all about, changing your hook baits as well. You know, I touched upon before, you know, trying a bit of corn or trying a bit bigger pellet. Mm -hmm. uh, to start with, you don't want to be selective. That first sort of part of the match, it's important, Jay, isn't it? Getting, yeah. Getting it right uh, and making sure there's sort of fish there, then you can work things out, can't Definitely. you? Definitely. For, for me, I don't know, let's have a talk about a, a standard session or a match. Yeah. So a, a match for us, it's what we're going to see 90% yeah. of the time. But Definitely. So we have the, the added advantage of watching people. Mm. But if we didn't have that, like we do in our coaching sessions when yeah. we're on our own, yeah. then so for me, I, I always find that the best way, short at this time of year is still good, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You're still going to catch a few shorts. And for me, like we just touched on, that's the line that tells me everything that's going to happen from there. It tells you how good it's going to be mm. with how many fish are feeding, whether yeah. there are fish feeding, yeah, yeah, yeah. what type of fish are present in your peg. And it's generally a short, close six, seven, eight metre line. They're almost the water that doesn't really matter. Mm. To me, it's a nice area that it doesn't matter if I mess it up. So by starting there, I can make my mistakes and still have a peg to come. Definitely. And you can work out through that session, through that short, you know, obviously session that you started on where they want to be you know on the depths and that can't you yeah if you're not getting bites there it means it might be a warmer day so they're just going yeah to they don't them. want to be yeah they yeah, don't they want to be in that it's depth. a fantastic way and that, that's what us as match anglers are always looking for isn't it definitely i think it's where pleasure anglers fall behind a bit in definitely. that they don't make the most of the day because they come with a uh, say some match anglers as well they come with a preconceived idea of what they want to do yeah and it, it's yeah, the wrong way to go massively wrong got to be adaptable mate, you? of course you do the, the fish have to tell you what to do and, and they do. Yeah. They like, do. As long as you feed in the correct manner, with the correct bait for the species you're fishing for. Yeah. I mean, it, may, it yeah. might sound daft like what we're talking, you know, the fish will tell you what to do. They don't come up to the top and say, <laughs> I want a pellets today, I want some maggots. <laughs> it's all about working out, you know, whether you're getting liners, far lookers. Yes. If you're getting sort of like bites through the drop, you know, it's in bow waves. That, that's what we're on about, isn't it? Yeah, the, the impact that the way you're introducing feed has on the fish. Yeah. The, the, the difference throwing five pellets can make compared to cupping five pellets or any bait 
it, it's unbelievable. Definitely, and, and you'll not find that out. Obviously, like reading in magazines or you know watching videos, you've got to be out there on the bank and putting it into into practice. It's it's fantastic. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just how you pick these little things up, isn't it? Little things are sticking, and that's it. You just go and put it into practice yourself. Yeah, it's awesome. I like that. I'm um, going to do some fishing in a bit, but before we do go back into fishing, so you're, you're going to go and fish your casters. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to have a plate. I'm going to go through air feeder fishing next, a little bit of feeder fishing to that far bank. Right, okay, nice. But as mate. well as that, we're going to have a bit of a longer segment than normal. I want to talk about actually the, the options you've got and different ways of feeding any peg, whether it's a feeder, a, a pole, whatever. Yeah. Whether it's margin, whatever we do. And at this time, how good it can be having positive and negative options. I think it's what you've done yourself, and you, you, you cast as a mega positive. Definitely. And long and is really. Pellets, I've, I've started off like really negative on the pellets, but it might be that, you know, we come to sort of like putting a lot more bait in. Depends mm -hmm. what kind of fish we're going to get in the swim first. As I said, we won't know until we start off fishing. Yeah. You know, we've had sort of like, what, half an hour, 40 minutes, yeah, and I'm beginning to. developed tell. yet, has it? No, not, not really. Uh, but, you know, there's other carp moving in now, so I'm thinking, all oh, right, might be a bigger ball than just trying, you know, waiting a little bit longer for a bite. Yeah. Waiting 30 seconds instead of 20. But that, that's it. And obviously, yeah, the likes of you with your feeder, you know. You can experiment with pinging bait over the top. That's a massive it, one, isn't it? Exactly that. Introducing them. Obviously, you're not grouping them, but you're getting that initial pile of feed in. Yeah. But you've got so much water as well that you can still do both. Right? And you, you can go for that perch down the channel. There's a massive, that big perch <laughs> in there. You're going to go for that perch, aren't you, mate? We catch a big perch on <laughs> yes. method feeder. Yes, mate. Like that. But no, it's, it's interesting. Mm. I love these little chats you make because you, you pick up so much and it's just like really interesting to see how... Every angler, sort of like, all, all right, all the top boys, the, the feeding presentation will always stay the same, but, you know, it, what works for one angler? It's we'll making decisions, another. isn't it? Mate, that, that's what stands anglers out, is when they make decisions. Yeah. And it, it's eliminating the mistakes. Definitely. And by approaching your pegs in certain ways, like we're going to talk about, it, it prevents them mistakes being made. All I do is just ring them up saying, Jay, what's going on here? And they put me right, and that's it, I win the match. <laughs> Well, that's right. the beauty of having someone like him to talk to, and you know that's that's hopefully what you'll learn off these uh, off these videos that we're doing. Um, you know, as I said, fishing's so diverse. We fish completely different, but all right, he's better. You know, he has better results. But you know, it's it's just one of them things. I love targeting everything. Um, it's just it's just what you're confident in, isn't it? And yeah. confidence plays a big part as well, doesn't it? Of course, it's a huge part. You have to have your way of fishing. Definitely, and we, we all fish as you say a little bit different, yeah, yeah, whoever yeah. it is. And you have to have confidence in what you're doing and an understanding of it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, there's got to be a reason why my float went under. Yeah. Not just because the fish at that it ate it because I did this. Just stick a BB on and it just elastic. It does it for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. though, enough gabbing. Rain stopped. It so, has actually. Let's nice, go back mate. and do a bit of fishing. Yes.